Alright, I am back live to bring you the team breakdown of the Cincinnati Bengals on NFC, AFC Championship Day. This is my favorite football day of the year, actually, even a little bit more than the Super Bowl, because I don't have to get ready to throw a party. It doesn't consume my whole weekend with Saturday and Sunday playoff matchups. It's just one day to see those two teams that get idolized in the Super Bowl for two weeks. And if you could see right there, I have a flag from last year, Super Bowl 50. We got Carolina Panthers versus the Broncos. So they're cemented in that Super Bowl forever. So today we get to see who goes to the Super Bowl. And I will talk about that later during the game that I play. But for right now, let's take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals. All right, the quarterback, Boomer Esiason. CBS broadcasts are also on the NFL Network. Boomer Esiason has pretty good maximum speed for a quarterback, so he can move around a little bit outside the pocket. I like his passing speed, 63. He can really gun some passes in there. So if that's your thing, if you like the Dan Marino passing speed, Boomer has good passing speed and also solid pass control with 56. Um, accuracy of passing is 69. Don't pay attention to that. That's rating doesn't do anything. Avoid pass block. Boomer's throwing over those defensive linemen and linebackers, 75. That's also really good as well. Now, since Boomer's a good quarterback, Eric Wilhelm, I don't really see you bringing him in for anything, so I wouldn't check his condition throughout the course of the game. You're going to stick with Boomer. And then the running backs. This is a strength of the Cincinnati Bengals. You got your speed running back, James Brooks, 56 maximum speed. Just a little 31 hitting power, ball control at 50, only a 38 in receptions. And then you got Icky Woods, best known for his touchdown dance, the Icky Shuffle. He is your power running back. 81 hitting power is very good. He'll be able to popcorn some defenders. Um, you want to see his condition go up so that hitting power goes up throughout the course of the game. He has a 50 ball control and only 31 in receptions. Harold Green, another running back. 38 maximum speed. You might want to take a look at his condition throughout the course of the game. You might want to put him in for Icky Woods if he goes into bad. Because he's a little bit faster, Icky Woods is only a 31 maximum speed. Then you got the other running back, Jennings. Same thing, 38 maximum speed. Keep, keep an eye on his condition. You might want to bring him in as that second running back for Icky Woods. But James Brooks, 56 maximum speed. He's solid. He's your number one running back. Now the receivers on the Bengals are not bad. Receptions at 56 for both of the top two guys, but they're not fast. 31 maximum speed only for Tim McGee. 50 ball control, and then that 13 hitting power for a wide receiver. Eddie Brown, 38 maximum speed, so he's, he's a little bit faster than Tim McGee. Only, and he's got a 56 receptions as well. That's pretty good in combo with Boomer Esiason's 56 pass control. So, you know, you will be able to get some covered catches with the Cincinnati Bengals, although I wouldn't count on it. And then your backup wide receivers are nothing to really look at. 25 maximum speed for a receiver is terrible. And then another one, Mike Barber, 25 maximum speed. And then Rodney Holman, your tight end. He's pretty solid. Another 56 receptions. So you got three guys on your offense with 56 receptions, which is very solid. Hitting power 69. Another that's good for blocking on uh, your running plays and also your passing plays where the tight end blocks. So Rodney Holman, he's good on offense. Let's take a look. Eric Kettis, yeah, he's not coming off the bench. He, he doesn't really have anything to offer. The offensive line for the Bengals is strong. So... You got Bruce 
Kozerski, 56 hitting power, a 63 at left guard, that's superb. 56 for the other right guard. A star at left tackle, Anthony Munoz, big time pro bowler. Joe Walter, he's the only, he's a, you know, he's an average at the right tackle. If he goes in a bad condition, he might be able to get thrown around, around a little bit, but he's he's definitely just not a weakness. So, 25 maximum speed, that's what your kick returner will get. You use Icky Woods as your kick returner since he's at 81 hit power, and that's your best hit power on the team. And due to how this game was programmed, you get your kick returner gets the maximum speed of the right tackle. Kicker, the kicker is above average to strong. Jim Breach, 63 kicking ability. That will give you a max range of about a 70-yard field goal. Void kick block isn't too good with 31. And then, of course, the maximum speed's up there. So you can track down the ball carrier on kickoffs. Lee Johnson, punter, 44. Hopefully you're not punting too much. All right, so the Bengals' defense. Overall, the Bengals' defense, I would say, is, if you take a couple players out, it's below average. But there's a couple players on this defense, specifically David Fulcher, the safety, that makes this an above-average defense. So let's take a look at the um, ends here and the defensive line. 50 hitting power, 38 maximum speed, that's all right. Nose tackle is weak, only a 44 hitting power. And then again, 38 maximum speed, 44 hitting power. So not too great on the line. Now James Francis, this is one of the guys that you're going to want to user control in specific situations. He's got a 50 maximum speed, 69 hitting power, that's good. You might want to blitz with him, get in on some running plays that you could break up the defensive line. But only a 19 interception, so he's he's definitely not a coverage linebacker. Kevin Walker, below average. Another poor linebacker, Carl Zander. And another poor linebacker, Leon White. So linebacking core as a whole is not great. James Francis is your star there. Carl Carter, oof, really bad ratings for a corner. Only 25 maximum speed, and to make it even worse, his hitting power is low, and his interceptions is only a 38. Lewis Billups, maximum speed, 25. Hitting power, 31, and only 44 interceptions. Really weak at the corners. So you don't have much going on the line. Your linebacking core as a whole is not that great. Your corners are both very weak. So Barney Bussey, he's a pretty good safety. He's got a 50 maximum speed, 50 interceptions, 50 hitting power. So he's not going to get thrown around. You can also user control him in certain situations. But who are you going to be user controlling on defense most of the time is this star safety. David Fulcher, 69 maximum speed. Starting at a 44 run speed at the snap of the ball, at a rushing power acceleration at 56, and a strong 69 interceptions. So most of the time you're going to be using him as a user control on defense. And he's what, this one guy makes this defense a little bit above average because he's in a good spot at safety and he has just excellent ratings. And that 69 maximum speed is going to also be your punt returner speed, which you're going to put Icky Woods there. So that's going to be pretty powerful, 69 maximum speed at punt returner and 81 hitting power. That's about as good as it gets. All right, so we took a look at the team. I'm just going to look at my playbook. This is my standard playbook, and I really like it with the Bengals because you got that run four with a power run up the middle with Icky Woods, and then you got... Brooks to get around the, the edge and try to bust some big gains. Also a big one up the middle with a good blocker as Icky Woods as your lead blocker for run two. Now, I just wanted to talk about these plays in general. Also, I noticed on the Tecmo Madison website, 
they're now breaking down certain plays that you should use in the tournament. I suggest going to take a look at those when that is a final product and they break down all the best playbook or best plays in the playbook at certain spots. It's going to be an excellent resource. So take a look at that and read up on it. But I have two flex plays. This one, this is one play that I would put in the playbook in certain situations. If the other team has weak linebackers, based on the matchup, you could pick this play because then if they try to bust in the line and the linebacker gets tossed, then you're going to break a big game because you have some lead blockers. But in this case, I'm going to stick with this running play. The other one I have as a flex play is run four, and only really a flex play if I'm using the Eagles. I will put in the run and shoot, uh, run around the corner here. Boomer Sison doesn't have enough speed to get around the corner, so I'm going to stick with this run up the middle. Okay, let's take a look at the matchups here. All right, so the Bengals, they hover in this tier that is high mid tier. I don't like very many matchups against the Bengals, but the one that I would suggest picking is the Bengals versus the Chiefs. Now, I used to look at TPC as kind of like the holy grail to where the or the, the TPC ratings on uh Tecmo player circuit is like the holy grail to the matchups and how good the teams are. So the Bengals and the Chiefs are a good matchup because they're both well balanced on offense and they all they both have star def defensive players. Now, on the Tecmo player circuit, the Bengals are rated over the Chiefs, and I just can't say that that should be true because I, I do think the Chiefs are actually the better team in that, and I'll tell you why. The Kansas City Chiefs have Christian Okoye as their running back, which has a 94 hit power. And if the Bengals, if the Bengals defensive players stay at their natural hitting power, then Christian Okoye can, can popcorn seven defensive players on the Bengals. And that, that is not good because that, that's putting a lot of pressure on you to do something with uh, Francis and also uh, David Fulcher. So they both have strong running be running games. They both have have good passing games, and they have star players on defense. But the Chiefs have a better kicker. Their offensive line is also strong, and their defense is more well balanced. Now, the one thing that makes the matchup good for the player who's using the Bengals is that a lot of times the Kansas City Chief player is going to be using a user controlling a linebacker which isn't going to have the best interception rating to get picks and back and uh, break up passes because you're, you're going to be using Derek Thomas and Percy Snow probably over half the time. But the Chiefs do have options in their secondary. They're just not the fastest players. So I would give that edge a little bit to the Chiefs, but that's a good matchup. You'll see that matchup called at the tournament. So who else would I call with the Bengals? Personally, I don't like any other matchup besides that one. But if my opponent picks the Bengals versus another mid-tier team, like the Dolphins, like the Cowboys, like the Redskins, like the Lions, like the Vikings, Rams, Chargers... Broncos. I'm taking the Bengals every time in that matchup. And I don't recommend calling those matchups because the Bengals are going to have the advantage. But what I would match them up, who I would match them up with is three other teams. And it's really just based on your comfort level with those teams. One is the Eagles. You know, the, if you're great with Randall, if you, if you got some wizardry with Randall Cunningham, QB Eagles, and you could probably entice your opponent into picking the Bengals, then that's not a bad matchup. Like I said, the Eagles are always a wild card because Randall's the most lethal weapon in Tecmo Super Bowl. The other matchup I would call is the Bears-Bengals. Well, the Bears have a strong defense, strong running game, but they're going to have that weakness in the passing game. But if you're a, if you know how to utilize the Bears correctly, that might be a matchup that you're comfortable picking. Me, in that matchup, I'm always going with Bengals. Um, but 
You know, some players would pick the Bears over the Bengals. And the last matchup is the Raiders. The Raiders are also have a weak passing game, but they have unbelievable speed on offense with Bo Jackson, their wide receivers. So I and they have a strong defense as well. So I would give the edge to the Raiders in that matchup, but you might want to pick them. You might want to test that matchup because you do have David Fulcher to try to slow down Bo Jackson. All right, so I'm going to go with the Bengals-Chiefs matchup. That like I said, it's the one to call if you call the Bengals in a matchup. The other thing about the Bengals is they are they're not good enough to mess around with the highest-tier teams like the Oilers, and the Giants, Bills, 49ers, but, you know, in those higher mid-tier teams, that's who you want to match them up against. So I always like to kick off, you never know how that first half is going to go, and you would like to have the ball back at halftime. So the chat is live, don't have anyone chatting today so far. But if you're watching the stream, I will conversate with you as I play this game. So the one thing about the one thing about the Bengals defense that I have an issue with. Ooh, a nice pick. And that was the safety bussy. I didn't think it was one of the weak corners. Defensively with the Bengals. You kind of fall in love with David Fulcher, even though he's not the best defender to pick against all offensive formations. But the thing is, he's in Tecmo Super Bowl terms, he's three speed notches higher than anyone else on the defense, you know, with Buck, Bussy, and Francis. So it's hard to pick one of them over, um, over David Fulcher. But one thing you will like about the Bengals is their balance on offense. Pass, run, your opponent's got to be ready for both. But the thing about Icky Woods, he's got that high hit power, at 81. But he's only, with that, he, he's only, even if he goes in a better condition, he's only able to popcorn about two defenders on the Chiefs. So, you, you have that advantage with Christian McCoy being able to popcorn seven players on the Bengals' uh, defense. So, I don't like that at all, to be quite frank with you. If I... If someone picks this matchup against me, looking at the teams in depth, I would go with the Chiefs. Would I call this matchup? Possibly. Although, I just like the Chiefs better in this matchup. So the good thing about the Chiefs, the Berg has a strong uh, pass control, 63. And then also Stefan Page has that strong... Uh, reception rating at 75 so you're going to see some covered catches with them but since you have David Fulcher at that high interception rating of 69 you're able to break up more of those passes than other teams would be able to so but if you bring you know Francis back in coverage and you know they pick a pass play they can definitely take a chance down the field the Berg to uh page and you might be in some trouble so you know even though they're you try in Tecmo when you're on offense you always try to throw the open receiver but once you break down the probability ratings of how things are calculated with uh, you know the the quarterback's pass control, the defender's interception rating, and your receiver's reception rating. 
then you know you're you're actually taking low risk throws. If you see, say your linebacker has a 19 interception rating, or your opponent's linebacker has a 19 interception rating. If I'm throwing, you know, Boomer Asaisen, which has a 56 pass control, to one of my receivers, say Holman, the tight end, 56. So you add those two together, and you get, uh, <laughs> you get a uh, 112 versus that 19 interception rating. That's actually a calculated low risk throw to be honest. So, you gotta keep that in mind. Players that understand the game in its depth of what the ratings are good for will take advantage of that. And you can't look at it like they're throwing up garbage getting covered catches or diving catches for touchdowns because they're actually they're in the know that your defensive player that you picked has a low interception rating and he has a less chance to pick it off or break up the pass. So what just happened right there, you had two defenders on a receiver, so when two defenders are on a receiver, it, it adds those both their interception ratings together to try to calculate the probability of incompletion, interception, and a catch. The third defender, if there's triple coverage, it doesn't do anything. So just keep that in mind. I know I repeat this on a lot of the videos, but I don't know who's going to watch what video, and I want them to have the knowledge to be a top player going into Tecmo Madison or any other Tecmo Super Bowl tournament you would play in. There's a couple coming up next weekend. Well, actually, it's this week now because it's Sunday. I'm going to Tundra Bowl 4 in Green Bay. And I'm looking forward to it. You're guaranteed four games. Um, they started releasing uh, they started releasing the the pools. And they're subject to change in case there's walk-ins. But uh, I was released in one of the pools as a number two seed, and I think that's very fair. So we'll see how I do. So being a number two seed, I'm expected in four games to go at least three and one. So I'm going to try to do that, and I think three and one will get me into the, the big tournaments to determine the champion. So we'll see how it goes. But... This time going in, my physical play, as far as with the controller, it's not it's not at its top level, but my knowledge of the game is better than it has been in the past. So we'll see how those two things balance out. Now we're gonna we're gonna cram on Friday. My cousin Sean's coming over. We're gonna play a lot of matchups because I have not been active online in quite a few years now, and that's really well where you get your big time practice in. Oh boy, very word is playing other user opponents that are skilled at the game. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope it's enough to get ready for the tournament. I also bought this 400 watt cigarette um, cigarette lighter charger where you can plug in two, it has two outlets and two USBs so in theory I want to plug in a uh, small TV and also a Nintendo so we can play on our way to Green Bay. It's a three hour drive. And it's half time, and the Chiefs got on a, a three on the board there. Nick Lowry, best kicker in the game, got that 81 kicking ability. It's another advantage for the Chiefs. If you need to kick a field goal to win the game, Nick Lowry is your guy. So, I've experimented a little bit playing my brother, playing my cousin with other plays besides this playbook that I'm choosing, and I just haven't 
had rep- enough repetitions with those plays to feel comfortable. So most likely, if you play me in the Thunder Bowl or Techno Madison or one of the other tournaments, I'm now debating on going to the Detroit tournament, the the Kumite, I think it's called. It's at the I believe the Detroit Brewing Company and I think a Tecmo tournament at a brewery would be awesome. So I'm thinking about going to that in March. And I like the, the format too with the Swiss rounds. So you get, you know, five or six games and then the the top players be it 16 or whatever, it depends on uh, how many people enter the tournament, go into the playoffs. So I do like that format, and I would like to try that out in a Tecmo Super Bowl tournament. Haven't had any of the Detroit Brewing Company beers, so I'm always interested to try new breweries. I have been to Michigan many times, but have never been to Detroit. Been to Saugatuck, Michigan, Douglas area quite a bit. Also have an aunt and uncle in South Haven. And uh, really like Grand Rapids. It's a good place for me. Get that Founders Brewing Company there. Got the Grand Rapids Brewing. Beer wasn't as good, but as the founders, but still a cool place to hang out. So, one of my most memorable matchups, the Bengals Chiefs, and I've talked about this on one of the other videos, is in Tecmo 6 when I was fresh playing as much online as possible for about a year and a half. Um, I made it to the big tournament. Won my first playing game, and then in the final 32, I played Mort, who ended up winning that tournament. And I believe, I don't remember who called the matchup, but I ended up with the Bengals. And I was beating him, and I was up by at least 10 in that game. And he came storming back, forced it to overtime, and ultimately won the game. And I could say... That one of the big reasons that he won that game is because of his tapping ability in grapple situations. And since Christian Okoye, he has Christian Okoye, and he's already knocking, knocking, popcorning the Bengals defenders at a high rate, and me not being able to out tap him with Francis David Fulcher, that's really what was the turning point in the game. So, you know, he, once he got that run game going, it was tough. And I, I'm pretty sure that he won the toss in overtime after he tied it up and won the game. So that, that was heartbreaking because I was, I was ready for that tournament. Entering that tournament was the first time I was, like, ever number one ranking on the TPC. And that's when more people played it. They would use AOL Instant Messenger to contact each other. With the TPC question mark, hitting people up for games. But yeah, if I had that matchup again, I think I would like the Chiefs over the Bengals. And there's another touchdown for the Cincinnati Bengals. So if you don't have uh, user opponents to play, the best thing to do is just simulate a season up till week 17 of the playoffs. Play as many of those games as you can. If you want your AI, your, the artificial intel- intelligence of the computer team to be at its max, just blast through a season, win every game. The more games you win without losing, the harder the AI will be. Um, I believe the first team that I ever went 16-0 and won the Super Bowl with was the Bears. Being from Chicago, you know, I like using the Bears in this game. Also, the, De- the Detroit Lions love to use them as Susans. Uh, 
But as I found out more about the game, I was not happy with the uh, quarterback situation with the Bears. You know, Jim Harbaugh's rating's terrible, 25 pass control, so you got to bring in your boy Mike Tomzak for that 38 pass control, and that's still not good. So it's pretty much all defense and running for the Chicago Bears. And as I got better at passing in this game, they're no longer a team that I really wanted to use. Although I feel like at one time my running game was the strongest part of my offense, whereas now I feel like it's my passing. But you just got to get comfortable with pass plays. That's what it's really about. And knowing just which ones work the best. Hey, guess the play. What do you know? Chiefs are calling timeouts. They think they're going to come back from 35 to 3. Okoye meets David Fulcher, and that's not looking good. So, yeah, if you're not using David Fulcher on defense, and there's a... There's a pick for Fulcher. So let me explain uh, offensively. I do like pass. I do like pass uh, two and three because they they actually have one less receiver. I think sometimes having that fifth receiver can make it harder to get a, a pass to a certain guy. So it kind of like simplifies who you can throw to in those situations. With pass, the thing I don't like that much about pass three is that tight end post because certain quarterbacks are not going to be able to make that throw uh, if they have like a, if they have a poor pass control it's going to be a hard throw to make. If they have a poor passing speed since it's right in the middle of the field your defenders most likely going to get there easily. But with the Bengals that's a good play because you will be able to hit that tight end post down the middle on pass three because Boomer Siasen has good passing speed at 63. So let's see if I can hit it right here. And he's covered, so yeah, I'm not going to throw that. So that pass play is actually better with certain quarterbacks. The other ones, the other three pass plays, pass one, pass two, pass four, those are all pretty universal with the quarterbacks, but I would say that pass three that I use is better for certain quarterbacks because it's hard to hit that tight end post over the middle. And sometimes that's your best option. If you try to throw up a floaty ball to a guy like Dave Craig, it's probably going to get picked. Oh boy. Alright, 13 seconds to see if we can punch one in. And let the defenders just go just enough. And Ronnie Holman with the big touchdown. Yeah, keep in mind on that uh, pass four that that streak on the top is actually going to be your tight end. Usually it's your first wide receiver or second wide receiver. But with the Bengals, or not with the Bengals, with any team, it's your tight end. So if you have a strong tight end, you know, that's where you want to throw in the big streak. All right, so had a little bit of a run game. James Brooks, 64 yards. Moore Sison threw tore it up 340, and Tim McGee with 100 yards receiving. So yeah, we took a look at the Cincinnati Bengals today. They're a strong team. If you see them called in the tournament against mid-tier teams, they're higher mid-tier. So the Bengals are the teams you want to go with. Chiefs Bengals are. The ideal matchup for the Bengals, but if it's called, I, I personally would go with the Chiefs, but you won't feel bad if you get left over with the Bengals. So that's that's one of those fair, high, high mid-tier matchups that you can go with. So for the next breakdown, it's going to be the Cleveland Browns, a team that I fall in love and out of love with consistently in this game. So we'll take a look at them and their matchups. And Tecmo Madison 13 is actually named 
off a player in this game, Kevin Mack. The game, or the tournament, is called Return of the Mack. With that great music from the 90s, the Return of the Mac. So, the Tecmo Madison tournament is always named after one of the players in the games. And I think this year it's a masterful pick with Kevin Mack, Return of the Mac. So, next stream, we'll be breaking down the Cleveland Browns. If you check this out live, thanks for watching. If you check it out later, let me know what you think of the Bengals matchups. We'll see you next time. Oh, and I didn't, well, I didn't even say who I was going to win the AFC and NFC championship today. So I'll do that really quick. NFC, I'm going with the Falcons at home. I don't think the Packers defense is going to be good enough to stop the Falcons offense. Um, and the Falcons defense, I feel, is like a little bit better. But if the Packers win the turnover battle, you know, Aaron Rodgers will have that offense running good as well. So it's going to be a close game, but I'll go with the Falcons. And then the other AFC matchup, I'm not taking, I'm not betting against the Patriots at home with Tom Brady. Out of the four quarterbacks left, Roethlisberger is the one who has struggled a little bit. Now it's still Ben Roethlisberger. Anything could happen. He is Antonio Brown. He has Bell out of the backfield. It's going to be a close one as well, but I'm going with the Patriots, Falcons for the Super Bowl. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Packers, uh, Patriots, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady matchup. So we'll see what happens. And then the next time I'm on a stream talking about the Browns, we can talk about the Super Bowl matchup. So until next time, thank you.